And I wanted to talk about Normie World, where the Normies live and the Normies do play. Do you know what the normies are, Harry? Yeah, tell me what the normies are. Normal people. No, uh, normal people. Yeah. Uh, is that you and I? Are we, are we normies? No, you're no, not normies. We're not normies. Normies are people, because those of us who pay attention to even the slightest <laughs> politics, I don't think classifies normies anymore. Yeah. I think a normie is someone who really doesn't pay attention to anything yeah. and just lives their life. You see, and- the, the normie, he goes to his office job and he sits there in front of his office, in front of his desk, and he processes whatever reports, he just does whatever he's supposed to do, He'll listen to some, you know, tacky pop music, and then he'll go home to his normie wife who's been watching soaps all day, and then he'll be like, you're right, babe, should we go over to the Weatherspoons or to, to Miller and Carter if they're really pushing the boat out? <laughs> and uh, they, they'll go they'll go and drink some cocktails and have a thing, and then they'll go and watch some trash movie at the cinema, but they won't for much longer. And, uh, and then... It's love Island, mate. And, and they will do this forever, not understanding that the world is degrading around them. Or that there is something out there that's more. Than uh, this. I, I I think people by and large are more awake than you give them credit for. Way actually. too optimistic. No, well, well, I, well, well, I, 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 am, I am optimistic. I am optimistic. I mean, I've been an you know proper activist now for what since 2019, four, four years, and I think you have to be an fundamentally an optimist to be an activist because you've got to believe one in humanity and two in the possibility that humans can change things, you even know what? even you know, in the face of gigantic. Weberian bureaucracies which try to strip away our humanity. I still believe that there is a ghost in the machine and that ghost is people like me. And but I, I have I, more I, faith in I, normies than you do. I felt that way in 2014 when I started as an activist as well. <laughs> oh, right. Fair, okay. <laughs> so I'm here, I'm here talking about... I'm, I'm not quite at... I need to go on a little bit longer yeah, and then I'll become as cynical as you. Yeah, when you've been That's doing it. it for as long as I've been doing it. You are, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, though, I'm talking about about a third of the population from here, not not like the actual majority. No, no. Because uh, I'm going to be talking about people who do try and pay attention to the news, but they've just got the worst possible ideas about how to do it and uh, the choices they made, which I think you'll agree with me after I show you them. But we'll start off by promoting something on Lotuses.com, being why feminist immigration policy will save the West. Um, too long didn't read, women only. I'm yet to actually find a counterpoint from a normie or non-normie, so I thought I'd just advertise it again to be like, no, seriously, this will actually solve all our problems. I've yet to hear an argument why we should allow a single foreign man to come into the country. That's my point. There isn't one. Why, women, why would you allow literally no downsides men to live in your country? Men, well, for, yeah. for, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. I tend not to give an opinion on that. What I do say is that we absolutely have the right to discuss that issue hmm. without being de facto criminalized. I'm not, I, I'm not saying we, we shouldn't. I'm just saying, why should we, right? But like, no one ever says why we actually would like foreign men to come here. No that, one ever says. Well, that's like, the, well what's like the reason? Point. It's like, why not? Well, I, 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 again, you've got such a cynical view of humanity. I think, I think immigration, <laughs> I think immigration is by and large a good thing. Why? I think immigrate, well, I think the ability <laughs> to go and live, live in a foreign country yeah. is a good, is a good thing. What I'm entirely against but who's it is, for? is unlawful entry into a country. Right. So if, if 50 million Chinese people moved into your town, no, because how would they get here? We, they, they need to, they need to come. No, they need to come lawfully. Yeah, Otherwise yeah, so, we yeah, send them they, back. If they come lawfully, if, if literally the government allows 20 million Chinese people to come Currently we have your, no limit. In your, in no, your I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm absolutely not for unlimited immigration. But, absolutely not. Right, what I'm so, saying is that I, what I'm saying is that I think Im- immigration yeah. as a concept is a good is a good thing. Now that's not Might putting be. a number on it. Yeah. I'm saying that immigration is a good thing. What but, I'm only in over, the very over abs- that though. What I'm saying is that we have to have the the absolute right, the fundamental right to discuss numbers and how we how we immigrate or emigrate without being. Uh, a per- becoming a person of interest to the police. No, I, 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 mean, I yeah. totally agree yeah. with that, yeah. obviously. But, the, but that's the point. It's, it's only in the very abstract that you can say immigration is good. And then when you start actually applying it to reality, it's like, hang on a second, there are real questions about... But again, immigration is human. Yeah. Being uh, Exploring and leaving, leaving your, the pla- your place of birth mm-hmm. is, is human. It's human nature to look what's over the next hill, see what's over the next field, see what's over the next sea, and go, oh, I like it over there. That's better than, the, 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 than where I live. My own daughter has emigrated to Australia, for instance. Sure. So I'm all for um, movement of people. What I'm not for is movement of peoples. Mm. And there's a difference. Yeah, no, when, that when, is when, a good yeah, difference. Yeah, 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 when, yeah. When, when you have mass immigration, mm. as we've got at the moment, 
with with de-restricted borders because they are entirely de-restricted. Oh, the, the, yeah, yeah. The the, the 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 lifeboats have now become the taxi service. Yes. That's entirely entirely wrong. I think Suella Braverman needs to needs to stick. Personally, I think Suella Braverman needs to stick to her guns. Oh yeah, and deliver what the majority of British people want, which is secured borders. Yeah. Well, that is not saying that immigration is a bad thing. It's saying that legal immigration is a good thing. But uh, we, we can go on forever. We'll, we'll carry on. Moving on. <laughs> what I was actually talking about, that was just a plug. <laughs> I was just be promoting something. <laughs> the actual thing I'm talking about is um, the normies, as I mentioned, and what they listen to. So here is the University of Oxford, who worked with Reuters to do this. And it's a, it's a listicle, essentially. But an academic one. There we are. I so, was going to say, I would have thought the University of Oxford would be a little bit above listicles. Well, I mean, listicle is really just a list. And there we are. New podcast. Who's listening to what formats and what's working? So this is, I don't know, I suppose you could argue looking at what you should do if you're making stuff. And um, they list a whole bunch of different stuff. And the thing that I find most interesting is they list the particular podcast people are listening to, at least according to their data, which I'm just going to have to trust, I suppose. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that's not interesting to me. But this part, is the most interesting to me. As you can see, they have the uh, the news roundup there, which has uh, five things from CNN. Okay, NPR. All right, uh, deep dive stuff. They've got the the New York Times. Okay, documentary stuff. They've got Partygate from ITV. So right. Okay, there's quite a lot of establishment legacy media stuff in here. Yeah. And then the extended chats up to four hours. Of course, Joe Rogan wins. I bet Joe Rogan has more views than all of these people combined. I think so. But the the thing that shocked me because I I don't know I just. I don't know who listens to this. Is you can see that the rest is politics with that guy who was a propagandist for Rory Stewart and Tony Blair, Alistair Campbell. Yeah, and Rory Stewart. The, the who would watch that? The Opium Man. Uh, and then, and then the last one there being the news agents with Emily Mattis, the the BBC journal, who I think I can't remember if she quit or got fired in the end. Been crap, but either way, yeah, someone else's problem, not mine. And um, my point being, they then go on to list the most viewed things for news in the UK. So, a little more close to home. I think I might have been it. can't remember. No, nope, it's a little further down. That's the American one. Eh. That was it. I can't remember. The, the, you, the layout was just, different just on my laptop. Is all. You, you were just up. You were I'll just, just on it instead because I remember it. So, they're saying here that the rest is politics, the BBC newscast and the news agents there. They're all joint number one and 31% of all named podcasts that are actually listed to BBC people in the UK and mm -hmm. the news category are BBC News. And I just... Okay. This is what I mean by normies, where like your your interac your interactions and with politics in any regard will be BBC News. Ah, that's probably about it. Yeah, you, you sort of give up at that point because trust me, the BBC would never lie. My friend has a good game for that, which is you ask people, do you remember those television vans that would come by and beam into your house to see if you had a TV license? You ever seen one? <laughs> no, but you remember the adverts. That's because they don't exist. Yeah, I the BBC would never yeah. lie. Yeah. Well, and we've got we've got more direct things that people the BBC have lied about. For example, uh, why Coots deplatformed Nigel Farage? Indeed. Or my return visit to Totnes that never happened. There's an endless list. It's just that one I think resonates with most normies. The example my friend gave because mm. while well, everyone's heard about TV vans, yes. they've seen the adverts and then have never seen a van. Mm. And also scientifically, that doesn't even work. How like TVs <laughs> oh, yeah. take in data; they don't transmit anything. So how would you even scan a TV? <laughs> yeah, I love the idea that oh, no, we've got some secret technology that can beam into your front room and tell if you're <laughs> illegally watching the BBC. Yeah, that, no, you can't. Someone did a physics degree. Not yeah. possible <laughs> scientifically. It's not the case that we could do that with terrestrial televisions. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically operating a. Uh, the fear of the panopticon, isn't it? That's, yes. that's what's going on. Yes. You know, if you believe you're being watched, you comply. Yeah, that's exactly it. What is interesting, though, is they say that this is the UK audience of in UK domestic products that are consumed by the UK audience, whereas the uh, products people consume on large are a bit more diverse in the sense that they're all American, as you can see here. When people actually in the UK, when you widen the net to non-UK podcasts, the number three are The Ben Shapiro Show, uh, Pod Save America, and Jordan Peterson. There you are. I'm pretty sure I can label him as American now because he's working with the Daily Wire, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. North America, either it's way. from America. He's yeah. Canadian, isn't he, I believe? Yeah, he is. But And they're not the only people who listed this. I saw this article. It was also just like the most popular podcast, what are people listening to? And um, the news agents is in there as well. So I decided to check out the news agents because I, I don't bother. I, I never heard of it. So I, I don't know what the normies were listening to. Found out apparently that's what they're listening to. So 
I thought I'd go and give it a look. And you may remember the story yep. of Nigel Farage as yep. we went over. Nigel um, Farage's resounding victory of these liars. Yeah. They did a couple of episodes on this oh, did they? scenario. So I thought I'd check out what are the normies getting for information. Hmm. And for people who don't know, just a, a quick catch up on the Nigel Farage story, which is the latest news is the leftist puppets in the CEO and I think the uh, chairperson in charge of NatWest have both had to leave because, well, the politically motivated debanking of Nigel Farage is kind of a faux pas and probably illegal. So, or about to be, because they might change the law. So, how do you think the news agents decided to inform the public about this story? With the facts? No. No, nah, no, why, why, why would you? So here we are. This is their uh, Twitter account, and they uh, decide to dunk on Nigel Farage for being a rich man, which is the real story. Let's uh, play this. Is this the clip? I wonder. Next one. Maybe the next one. Okay. If you put to one side the leaking of customer confidentiality, which we probably all agree was egregious, I think the one thing we've learned from all of this is how to whip up a populist storm. Because at the heart of this is the choice by one private bank to say no to one customer who they decided was costing them too much and wasn't bringing them in enough money. That's they offered true. him another high street bank like 95% of the population use, and that wasn't good enough. And he made it, Farage made it an argument about free speech, about liberty, about censorship, when it wasn't, no one was shutting him down, no one was what? stopping him from banking, no one was what? calling him names. Nonsense. He simply what? waited until he paid off a mortgage, having decided ahead of time that they would call it quits at that point. And this isn't a public utility. It's not electricity. It's oh, a posh li it. private Libertarian bank. Now. It's in the name. Yet the power of the populist somehow is to turn utter entitlement into victimhood. And that is quite the move. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that, again, that is absolutely quite astonishing. That's amazing. Like, they're not calling him names. Uh, no, they did. They call him a racist grifter, actually. Yes. Uh, they have their exact words. But I love how their version of the story is that Nigel Farage is oppressing this poor defenseless bank account, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> an international billion pound organization. Yeah, yeah. How could he? Yeah, in yeah. fact, they, they say that he's starting a culture war. Well, oh, he, hasn't, no. he, he didn't, hasn't started it, has he? he? He brought it to the surface. Yeah, he's. Say, I, 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 I'll yeah. tell you now. When, when, no, I, when I was chairman of. Hang on, sorry. Well, sorry. Not even that. Like, he's sitting there having a lovely day, having a bank account, and <laughs> the bank go, let's start a culture war. Let's debank him for having the wrong opinions. Like they brought it up. Yeah, yes. of course. Oh, him. I, 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 of course they did. Absolutely. But this has been going on a long, long time. When I was chairman of uh, of Reclaim, when I when I went first went to the Reclaim offices, hmm. I said, right, what I need to see, I need to see our banking, I need to see our insurance. And um, at the time, there was no insurance. The reason there wasn't any insurance was because nobody would insure. I said, well, that that yep. can't happen. If we're going to have employees and we're going to have contractors and we're going to be mixing with the public, we have to have uh, public liability. We have to have. Uh, employment liability. We have to have that. So I had to jump through all sorts of hoops in order to get that. One of those hoops was to set up a private limited company um, and keep Lawrence Fox's name right away from it. Uh, and we we used the we used the, the corporate shield mm. uh, to do that. And by that means, we were able to get insurance and all the rest of it. And we had a perfectly good bank in Metro Bank. And then they just decided one day. Yeah. Uh, that uh, they no longer wanted to, uh, to to have us banking with them. We complied with absolutely everything. So again, in order to in order to get a bank account, I had to use the not the ruse, but do the ruse of a private limited company. Now that's 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 entirely wrong. What's happening is you are being hard shadow banned from from the political society. Yep. Uh, you want to operate lawfully. You want to operate with insurance. You want to operate so that all the money in and all the money out can be accounted for and people can pour over it and see that you're not taking brown paper bags from some shady Saudi somewhere. Yep. But you can't do that because the banks are debanking you. What that does, in effect, unless you're creative like I was, the temptation is to start operating a black market of funding. That cannot possibly be right. That can't be what the public want. It's certainly not what 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 what, what the electoral commission wants. Mm. And so Nigel Farage has done us all a great service. He did not start this culture oh, yeah. war. He exposed the culture war. And Emily Maitlis is being a complete and she's lying. Yeah, a utter she's just lying. liar about this. Yeah. A total liar. Not, about not this. a single thing she said could be construed as her slipping up, no. maybe getting the facts wrong or something. No, you are utterly just lying about the story. Because as you laid it out, 
that is the case. Nigel Farage is actually kind of a hero for taking on, because I've had it too, when I tried to set up a bank with UKIP, same situation. Mm -hmm. And okay, the public are being oppressed by the banking system on the basis of political views. And Nigel Farage is actually a hero coming in and defending our rights. It's not just him, obviously. And their version of events is, well, posh guy. Yeah, ex like, exactly. I mean, they they, 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 they cancelled the people. rights of the bank. <laughs> yeah. like, screw the rights of the bank. No, the war crime of the century is defending the people, at least according to the news agents here, yeah. which is apparently joint number one for the most new watched news program, at least podcast in the UK. But there's, there's nothing, you know, we've talked a lot about words today, like norms and stuff. She uses a word which I really object to, which is populist. Yeah. As though, as though populist is somehow stupid. It's somehow wrong. This notion that populism yeah. is bad well, that shows absolute contempt by the liberal elite to the ordinary working class uh, yeah. person, a middle class person, the hardworking person. It shows utter contempt for it. They they did this with Brexit. They you know, they set the question. They do with and then when we gave them the wrong answer, they said we'd misunderstood the question. Why? Because we're all so stupid. Yeah, they do this with every issue. Yeah. Every issue. Gender, <laughs> like <laughs> immigration, race, whatever it is. Every issue, you're bad because you're not us. Yeah, you're populist, you're stupid. Yeah. So yeah. Nigel Farage did see this, and he retweeted this tweet about it, so I suppose we'll take that as his sort of opinion. He writes here that Farage is the one provoking a culture war, not the people who compiled a dossier of his political views, not the people who leaked his financial details. It's just, just Farage. It's Farage who's done this. But yeah. also, like, they, they literally like complained that he retweeted a Ricky Gervais comedy skit. Yeah. Like, that was in there. It's just, come <laughs> on. So this this is um, the most recent segment about the Nigel Farage bank thing. And I listened to all of their stuff on this just to make sure it wasn't being taken out of context or something. Now, Emily doesn't seem to be part of this particular one because it's the most recent one, I suppose. But it's just as terrible. I, I don't have time to chop it all up and, and play it because it would be too much. But they say in here, um, to start off, why does it matter that a rich man has been debanked from a rich bank? <laughs> Oh, what does it matter to you? I mean, the, the, the whole who just have your banks. But let, let's just assume, yeah. like, they're actually not maniacs. Who <laughs> I think want they to are maniacs. Just completely disinform the public with propaganda. I mean, in that case, the story just completely went over their heads. <laughs> I presume they're just like rescue animals or something, just completely unable to actually do the basics. And uh, say they say in here that it's because Nigel Farage has dragged the right along with him that this is a story, not to do with any of the human rights violations. Of you know regular people having their lives as you put it but shadow banned in but real life dragged the right along with him yes he's he's got just, oh my god even politicians are upset that this is happening why are they, they standing in defense of the bank <laughs> you'd think like just they think go on to admit that every normal person should have the right to a bank account but Nigel Farage is a rich man who wants a rich account so. As if this has anything to do with the question. The question is just, should you have your access to the bank? And should a bank be able to get rid of you because of your views on politics? I've been watching All like of it just goes over the, heads. the sort of Westminster sort of house comedians, the court jesters, where they're all like, oh, well, the bank is deemed Nigel Farage to be a racist. It's like, I don't care. <laughs> Like, what oh, the yes, bank the, the guardians of morality. Yeah. The bank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's, the, it's this notion of... Um, does not uh, accord with our values. Yeah. What are these values? Can we have a list of your values, please? I'd yeah. really like to see a okay. list of your values. Then I'd like to see where I signed up to the list of your values. Then I'd like to see who else has signed up to the list of your values. Where's that in the contract? Yeah. Where Where yeah. is that? Where is that in the contract? And you know, this extends far beyond uh, the bank. Down in Down in Suffolk uh, this last week, the, um, the the Suffolk Chief Constable has written to the Peter Chat Tatchell Foundation offering an apology for historic wrongs against the LGBTQI plus community. Nobody knows what the TQI plus community is, by the way, and it didn't exist a few years ago. But nevertheless, she's issued an apology for historic wrongs. Well, and God. then she said that their force will not allow anybody, anybody who does not sign up to the values of the TQI plus. What? What? What when values? That, please, yeah. please define what these values are. Well, they have uh, a stab at it, these guys. And yeah. uh, they say that, well, Nigel Farage claims that it's the inclusion industry that's trying to shut him down. So, I mean, the diversity and inclusion values that the bank would write about, presumably those are the values we could look at. But then they go on to deny that the inclusion industry even exists, which doesn't make any sense, because how else did he lose his bank? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What were the values that they were promoting? Well, not the ones that we list on the website. That's for sure. <laughs> what, what I love about the inclusion industry is it requires us to kick out this guy. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Mm. Inclusion means 
the opposite of inclusion. Yes. It's an exclusion industry is yes. what it is. It's hard. It's, literally it's, it's hard shadow ba banning you yeah. if you do not agree to our very narrow worldview. That's what it is. Yeah. So they, they then go on to say that uh, Nigel Farage claims this was an establishment job against him to try and destroy him because he's obviously the actual leader of the opposition in this country, if we're frank. Which is like, true. I, I, it's weird, isn't it, that a non-elected politician is really the leader of the opposition when it comes to this country in terms of things actually happening in oh, opposite to the government. But, this country's so screwed. Hold on the conversation. <laughs> but he, they say it's obviously not that. It's obviously not that the establishment tried to destroy Nigel Farage. The establishment here being a bunch of rich bankers who wanted to kill him because they didn't like his political views, come in political terms there with his count. Um, it, the reason it's not, we can prove it, is because they failed. <laughs> <laughs> it's not attempted murder, Your Honor. Because he's not dead. <laughs> he's not dead. <laughs> exactly. I, <laughs> but that, that, you know, that's exactly this is that's, what I mean. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> the argument that the College yeah. of Policing used with me. They said <laughs> that, that, that them knocking on my door about my tweeting activity back in 2019 yeah. was not a chilling effect because I'd carried on tweeting. Therefore, it wasn't a chilling effect. Is that true? No, 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 no. No such thing as attempted murder. <laughs> exactly. Crime exactly. gone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is what I mean by I don't really get what the normies are doing. Apparently, the normies are watching this. Um, get back to Ben Shapiro, I guess. That would, that would be far better than this, that's for sure. Yep. They ended off, they end off the story with um, a beautiful part, though, which does inform all of our viewers, they would say, maybe. Uh, they say here, quote, the banks are part of the culture war. That is fantasy land. And then they just sort of end <laughs> the segment, which um, okay, this, okay. this is after the leaks have come out, as you correctly yeah. said, calling him a racist grifter. Therefore, we don't want to bank with him. If they literally so, say he does, he, he's against our values. They literally say it. Yeah, and they won't define what their values are. No. They just know that Farage is against it. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I have actually run into one person before who did watch that show with Alistair Campbell, the, the yeah, propagandist yeah. for Tony Blair. And he told me about it. He said, oh, it's really interesting. I sort of looked at him and just asked him, you do know who he is, right? Mm. Like, you do know what he did for a job. Mm. He's a propagandist. Why you watched it? And he was just like, oh, well, I didn't know that. I'm like, what? I didn't know. I'm yeah. going to have to stop watching these podcasts because I've never watched any of them either, but they sound really interesting. I think we'll get loads of content out of them. Like, they're actually <laughs> mad people, but the mad people, I mean, all of them, as you can see, are establishment back as well. The global yeah. player here being from Global, uh, the media conglomerate, and then the rest of them obviously being from other legacy media outlets. BBC. I, I don't have much time, so I'll end off with this point, which is I just checked out the reviews and um, the top reviews for me, at least the highly rated ones, there was a theme. Look at this one. They really have no idea about anything. I think so many <laughs> people leave this place for young mindsets who do valuable contributions. But all the people who actually gave this Episodes good... Episodes don't report the truth. <laughs> Stop reading the one-star ones. <laughs> but those are true. Uh, but as for the people who actually do enjoy it, because I, I, again, as I said, I, I don't understand how you could, but of the people who did, there was a theme, and I'm just going to read some. Maybe you'll find the theme. As a British expat who's lived in New York for 20 years and is now living in a different country outside the UK, I value your contributions. And the next one I'm going to read is, as a twice expat, Brit to Australia and then the USA, I love America, but having lived in New York City for the last 15 years, I really appreciate this exciting analysis on British politics. I miss Zurich. And the last one being, as an Englishman now living in the United States, I often ask myself what I miss. It's not the beer, the fish and chips, or the daily newspapers. It's uh, the BBC. Okay, thank you, Emily and John, for filling this void. So just and the push. one stars are great, though. The one stars are gold, don't get me wrong. But I do find it funny that the only people who seem to actually be watching this crap are people who have no possible way of knowing they're lying, I suppose, because they're all living in the United States or outside of Expats, England. Yeah. And mm. therefore just assume like, they've not got the full information, so you mm. could just lie to them about what's going on here. Yeah, they Which can't actually the, watch the GB News segment where <laughs> Nigel Farage is like, no, this is what they said. So all these people who I presume are English living in the United States just believe that Nigel Farage is going around oppressing bankers <laughs> who are the, the, the <laughs> most worse off people in the country. And um, <laughs> if you donate five pounds a week now, you can save a banker from Nigel Farage's mean words. There we are. I just wanted to check in with the normies, what they apparently watch. And um, that's what I mean by normies, is someone who apparently does the bare minimum in terms of engaging with British politics and watches stuff like this and presumably comes away from it far more confused than any other man. Thank you for watching that segment from the podcast of Lotus Eaters. If you enjoyed, why not check out our website where you can get the podcast live from one o'clock on weekdays in full for free and uncensored, as well as getting for as little as five pounds a month, all of our premium content. For example, Bo series, Epochs, where he goes through certain historical periods, like this episode with Carl, where he talks about the Battle of Blenheim, which is in the Spanish War of Succession. 
If you'd like to find out all of the content we're putting out, you can follow Bo on Twitter at at HistoryBro1 and the rest of us at LotusEaters underscore com. Until next time, goodbye. Goodbye.